Well, that turned out nice. All cleaned up. It gets sand and debris in it pretty quickly, so I'm gonna have to maintain it. Overfilled it a little bit. That's what happens when you get sidetracked by other projects and you come back and you realize you left the hose running the whole time. It certainly sounds nice. And uh, yeah, you can actually see the drain now, so it's not clogged up anymore. It's working really well. Again, it's a little overfilled, but it actually holds water for much longer than I thought it would before it evaporates off. Uh, we had it filled up for about a week running it, not filled up, it was probably only a couple feet up, but yeah, seems to be uh, running very, very smoothly now. Very happy with this project. Okay, so back at the skag, as you can see, I have my nice little drawbar attached to the back of the skag along with a two inch ball. Not that I'm gonna be towing any trailers. That's actually so I can use my little garbage can tote to run things down to the curb. This tractor actually has a 350 pound tow capacity, which isn't much, but it's certainly enough for what I'll be using it for. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually pair it up to a cart that I've had for a while. So this cart right here is a cart my wife got for me a long time ago, probably close to eight, nine years ago. And uh, I forgot where she even picked this thing up at. It may have been like Sears or something when they were around. And if you're wondering what all that white powder is, that's actually snake repellent because we do have a lot of snakes around here. Anyways, this cart is made by DuraWorks. Uh, again, this thing's probably close to 10 years old in that range, eight to 10 years old. Um, I have used the snot out of it and I finally got around to cleaning it out. Believe it or not, the only thing I've ever had to do to really maintain this is to add air to the tires because they go flat after about six months if you're not using it. I drilled a bunch of holes in the back of it here because whenever you're loading dirt and stuff in it and then you get done with it, uh, I wanted water to be able to drain out as opposed to collecting and kind of standing in it, which it did a little bit. And you can see some rust here. But overall, this thing has held up very well. And what I like about it is this handle right here is removable so you can use this with a tractor. So basically I'll just pop this pin out right here. This whole assembly flips around and I can connect it to the trailer. Let's see if I can pop this pin out. And this should flip around once you pop that out. And I guess you gotta remove this pin as well. So, okay, so now it's backwards. Reversed, I pop this pin in right here. I'm gonna line it up. Throw this pin back in. Like that. And now I can hook it to the back of the tractor. So you'll use this pin to hold it in place and you can pull it around like a little utility cart for your riding lawnmower or for your UTV or whatever you plan on using. So having this is gonna delay the need for a UTV because I now have something to move stuff around on the property. And with the top speed of 16 miles an hour on that skag, whenever it's in moving mode, you know, it's gonna be enough for me to get wherever I want on the property with whatever I need. And we're gonna try that today. I have some of my mole traps I'm gonna go check and move around if I have to. And we're gonna see how this tows with the riding lawnmower. We are good to go so check it out now we have the cart attached to the tractor very very cool and there's no real weight pushing down on there at all because there's a hinge right here and this has its own four wheels so whatever we put inside of here is just going to be the pulling weight not any real payload capacity that's being applied to the tractor which is a good thing so we'll go ahead and put some things in here and make our way around the yard Okay, so got a fresh mound here. I don't really know where the run is unless it's right here where these tractor marks are, but yeah, this is a really fresh mound. You can definitely tell because it's just been stirred up. 
and the soil is a little darker than what's over there. Have one of my gopher hawks placed. I'm going to tell you, you know, probing around, getting a probe to find it, not the hard part. Trying to wallow it out that deep with this what, inch and a quarter tube or stake. A little bit more difficult, but I got it all done. Got this one in place. We'll see what we catch. The way you can tell if it's been triggered, let me trigger this one so you can see. Springs up like that. And you see the yellow right here indicating it's been triggered. So we got one trap set. We might catch something really quickly. Last time it only took like 10 minutes to catch one. So we'll see what happens here. Again, the challenge is getting it out. And if I have to get it out, I brought my little shovel here so I can make the hole larger and pull them out. And then I'll just refill the hole with the stuff right here. So got one set, didn't come unhitched. I didn't figure it would. I mean, it's pretty rudimentary design in terms of connecting it to your zero turn and towing it. Again, there's no hitch weight because this part right here is just kind of resting there because this has four tires of its own. Gives you a lot of capability. And what I like about this is you can pull this handle right here and you can dump the bed if you got dirt or whatever inside of it. So it's gonna come in really handy, especially if I have to backfill a hole, I can just load this up with some dirt, move it around and dump it where I need it. Very cool. Hopefully we'll catch one here real soon. I'm not exactly sure if that's the actual run or if that's one of the tunnels leading off to the mounds. My gut tells me that the run kind of goes alongside it like this and I'm not hitting one of the runs going to the mound itself, but we'll see. Gophers do not like light, so if they see any light peering in from around that, they'll probably try to backfill it, so that might catch them too. Anyways, off to the next one. Okay, so I have a bit of a critique for this gopher hawk, and the critique is the same one I've kind of talked about in videos with this stake. So this is what you use to wallow the hole out so you can put your actual gopher hawk snare in. Uh, the problem is if, well, let me say, it works well if the gopher hole is only about that deep in the ground. But if you have to go any deeper than that, this is nearly impossible to get down deep enough to make the hole you need without breaking it. And this one's broken. It just snapped right down the center. And I actually have two of these and the other one, the front broke off on. So everyone kind of says you put it in there and you kind of work your way back and forth until it goes down far enough. But once about this much of it's in the ground, it's incredibly difficult to work this back and forth enough for it to continue to going down. So I can get it down to about this point right here. But then after that, and that's about a foot deep by the way, for reference purposes. Um, but after that, if the hole is any deeper and trying to get it down to about this point is nearly impossible without breaking the thing. So that's the problem I'm running into. I really wish they would have made this out of aluminum, uh, maybe with an aluminum tip on it. Even if it cost a little bit more just for the long run, it would have given you a sharper tip and maybe even kind of an auger bit at the front or some way of getting the dirt out of the hole. Because if your mole is only a foot in the ground, then you're probably in good shape. Or if your gopher is only a foot in the ground, you're probably fine. But if you're upwards of 18 to 20 inches in the ground, you're gonna have a hard time doing anything with this and it pretty much makes that trap useless. So yeah, for anything about a foot in the ground, you're okay, but some of my moles or gophers are, you know, closer to, I'm gonna say about 18 inches in the ground and I've broken two of these now, so I'll contact them, maybe they'll give me a replacement, but that's the problem I'm having now. Anyways, guys, I wanted to give you a quick kind of update on, you know, how the little hitch receiver on the Tractor's working, coupled with this really cool cart that I've had for nearly 10 years. It works really, really well, really happy with it. The Gopher Hawk works really well if your gophers aren't too far in the ground. Other than that, it probably still works well. The problem now is the fact that this stake won't go deep enough in the ground without breaking. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we will be back to talk to you again very soon.